without any intervention at all, the bird is virtually certain to go extinct. The three remaining birds are separated from each other by enough distance that they probably never encounter each other. And there's no chance that there would ever be a breeding pair. So without intervention, they are they're doomed. In the build-up to this, I've imagined what it's going to be like getting the mist nets there and saying, right, you know, we're ready. Is the poli ready? And now we're ready. And so we just got to wait for the poli to do its part. We have caught the po'o uli. It's being put in the box and brought down right now. If everyone can get ready down there, over. We spent the last two years following these birds, seeing these birds uh, from a distance up in the forest canopy through binoculars, and now we're going to get a chance to uh, see the bird in the hand close up, and that's going to be a really special moment for all of us, I think. I'm not quite sure who's going to be more nervous, me or the bird, really. Okay, here she is. One female poli. Okay, let's stick her in the cage. Give her a chance to calm down for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay. I think she's doing okay so far. I'm not sure. I'm going to take a couple more of these base feathers off. And get it as high as possible. Yeah, it's got a fantastic mask on it. It's totally awesome. Just going to hold her for a little while just to see if she'll eat. Primarily to check and make sure the transmitter's on okay, but also just to give her an opportunity to feed before we release her. We're going to release her before dusk this evening uh, in the vicinity of the male. Seems to be in good shape in the cage right now, so everything's looking great at this point. Really great. right where we're sitting. This is the exact spot where the male is last seen. And what we're hoping is that the bird will roost somewhere close to here and that it gives it the best chance of uh, meeting the male. Okay. If I can get it to sit correctly. Come on, baby. Come back, babies. Where? Excellent. Oh, this is the culmination of almost two years' work on our part and a lot of commitment and devotion by a lot of people. Looks like she's just started to move a little bit. Um, that's the first movement of the morning, and that's a really good sign. It means that the transmitter's still on, and she's doing fine. She's moving around. Hey, 
it appears to be moving east towards the towards its home range okay that's interesting because that's what I was just saying to Bill too mine um, got a lot weaker uh, I couldn't even find it for a while um, so I think she's definitely on the move uh, 4-1 if you copy uh, we're going to sign off for now Bo Uli go home where'd you go? there we go She's on her way back to her own territory now, but I still feel like we've we've done a great job here, and uh, we didn't we didn't accomplish the ultimate goal, which was to set up a breeding pair, but we did translocate the female polly, which is what we came out here to do, and by all counts, I think we did it to perfection. This is a, a day in the life of the Boli. So it's very valuable. And we actually could follow it throughout the entire day and find out what this bird is doing, how it spends its time. You know, if we don't learn as much as we can about the Pohuli now, it'll be the, the parrot bill tomorrow, perhaps. When will there be three parrot bill left? And then the Koe Koe and, you know, and all the, the other honey creepers. with everything that we've learned from the past day, basically, um, we'll be in a better position to, to try something new and hopefully succeed. We know that we can put radio transmitters on birds. We know we can hold them in cages. We know that there's huge potential for captive breeding. And so over the last five or six weeks, we've learned an enormous amount of valuable information which can only benefit us in the future.